What I see is powerful enemies. What I see is Saul, a king running after me, wanting to hunt me down and kill me. But I won't speak that. I will speak life. Let him be as big as he wants to be. But I have a God who's bigger. I will live in the land of the living. And I will declare the glory of God and the wonderful works of God. Amen. I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all of you. You are beautiful, you are beautiful beyond description to marvelous forwards to wonderful comprehension like nothing else in all so who can grasp your infinite wisdom Who can fathom the depths of your love You are beautiful beyond description Majesty in throne above I stand Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Now he says, as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. He's therefore referring to an Old Testament passage. Particularly Psalm 116 verse 10, where the psalmist said exactly those words. He said, I believed and therefore I I spoke, he says, and Paul has read that. And he quotes that, he says, just as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We have the same spirit of faith. We are of the same kind of people, he says. Just like psalmist, I'm a man of faith, he says. I have faith. He spoke because he had faith. I also speak because I have faith. I believe, therefore I speak. Just like psalmist believed and spoke. This is the spirit of faith. This is how faith as a law functions. You, you speak what you believe. And now here, I want you to look at something very important. I believe and therefore I spoke, he says. There is an important connection between believing and speaking. I will say this to you. You only speak what you believe. I'm not saying you must only speak what you believe. You end up speaking only what you believe. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you cannot utter something possibly and say, sorry, I didn't mean it. That is not acceptable. 
when you utter something that means you mean it that is why you speak it you believe and speak this is the this is the law of life whether you like it or not this is the way it works it just won't come out of your mouth if it's not in your heart that's why jesus said in matthew's gospel chapter 12 verse 33 to 36 he goes into a long teaching on that he says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh he tells the pharisees how can you be evil speak good things he says because your heart is evil how can you speak good things not possible so whatever you believe that is what you end up speaking there is a real connection between believing and speaking so if you want to know what your heart's condition today is if you want to know whether there is faith in your heart or not you can easily diagnose today you've come to a hospital right now <laughs> spiritual hospital <laughs> don't worry i'm not going to find out what is in your heart you know what is in your heart what do you speak every day what do you speak when you walk as deuteronomy says god told the people of israel before they went into the promised land he said when you get there you want to enjoy the milk and honey and enjoy the good of the land then you must walk you must talk the word when you walk and you must talk the word as you sit down you must talk the word as you rise up as you go to sleep you must talk the word you must talk the word all the time the word must be in your mouth he says even in deuteronomy 28 where the list of blessings are given amazing blessings in the first 14 verses he said if you hearken diligently to the voice of the lord your god these blessings will come and absolutely overtake you he says hearken diligently sounds like he wants you to hear it and in tamil they've translated it like that also and at the surface level it doesn't look like it has anything to do with speaking it has only to do with uh, believing but it is not so if you look at the hebrew word hearken diligently those two words mean not just to hear carefully but it means to hear and declare loudly and clearly and uh, and continuously fully and wholly declare it is talking about declaring a hark and diligently has in it this element of declaration that comes out of your mouth so there is a real connection between believing and speaking when you speak you remember you are speaking because you are believing any time whether you are spiritual or not whoever you are whatever you are speaking you are speaking only what you are believing therefore you can know what you are believing by hearing what you speak if you know if you can hear what you speak then you know what is in your heart what do you believe if i can talk to a person for 5 minutes i can tell you what he believes i can tell you a lot about what he believes because when he speaks you understand what he believes he speaks only what he believes and that is why this is so important if you find yourself speaking things that are negative that is destructive and uh, if you find yourself speaking failure instead of success if you're if you find yourself speaking weakness and sickness and defeat all the time if that's the way your mouth is functioning then there is a serious problem in the heart in the heart there is a belief system that is totally wrong now you don't have to worry about it because you can change it it's good to uh, good to come up with a diagnosis you can change it how can you change it once you know there is something wrong in the heart and that's why you're talking all wrong now you take the word of god and the promises of god concerning your spirit soul and body and begin to speak it and speak it loudly and clearly and speak it continuously speak it consistently speak it night and day as you walk as you sit down as you rise up as you lay down you speak it all the time in every situation if you keep on speaking it soon enough i guarantee you the unbelief in your heart will be emptied out and your heart will be filled with faith 
because that is how the heart gets filled that is why paul when he talks about uh, the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and in your heart the word of faith which we preach notice he mentions the wo- um, word in the mouth first if i was writing romans 10 8 i would write here let the word be in your heart and in your mouth you know that would be a natural thing for me but the bible says it exactly the opposite the word is nigh thee even in your mouth and in your heart the word of faith which we preach why does he mention mouth first because it is through the mouth it goes into the heart so if your heart is not right if your mouth shows that your heart is not right and that's why you're speaking the wrong things you can very easily change the situation by beginning to speak uh, the word of god and the promises of god and faith is in it faith is loaded in the promise of god when you speak the promises of god your heart will be filled with the promises of god this is so important unless that change happens see we call this law of faith i would even call it the law of change a lot of people want change they don't like the way things are going right now they they don't like the way things are in their life right now they want to change everybody wants a change we hear it nowadays all the time change 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 you know i'm talking about a bigger kind of change a change in ourselves you know unless we change nothing is going to change and the change can happen in us significant change and true change can happen in us only when we change the way we are speaking only then it can happen as long as you speak the way you are speaking you're going to be the way you are nothing is going to change only when you change the way you speak then you will change the way you believe and then you will change the way you speak and then you will change the way you live that's the way it is so that is why jesus said he shall have what he says talking about man he says whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believes that whatever he says comes to pass will come to pass he shall have whatever he says he didn't say he shall have whatever i say he says he shall have whatever he says so i will say to you by the authority of mark 11:23 that you and i will not have just what the bible says see that's the problem if we will automatically have what the bible says we would all be fine today there won't be any problem we don't even have to come to church because whatever the good lord the almighty god has said here it will just keep happening in our in our lives without us knowing boom 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 you know we'll have the will of god happening you know whatever god's word says will happen you don't have to bother with my preaching then why are we coming and hearing preaching because whatever god says is not designed to happen automatically god is not designed to happen automatically whatever god has spoken you must speak unless you speak it will never happen so your situation says one thing the word of god says another thing what the situation says is not going to happen what the word of god says also is not going to happen what you say is going to happen you stand right in the middle there is a situation and what it says there is the word of god and what it says you got to now choose you have an option to choose what the situation says and go with it and say what it says you have the option to speak your troubles and your problems and what it looks like because that is there you can see it or you have the option to speak what god says about it his answer to that problem what are you going to speak bible says what you will say you will have not what the situation is let the situation say whatever it wants to doesn't matter let it look as big as it you know looks it doesn't matter that is not going to happen and this almighty god he has said a lot of wonderful things and that is not also going to automatically happen only what you say what you decide to say about uh, these things that is going to you either cho- you have only two choices one go with what your situation says and or go with what the word of god says if you say what the word of god says then your life will turn and become what the word of god says this is what we've been talking about xerox copy exam example and all of that you know is about that right so psalmist is, is of that kind he says i believe therefore i have spoken let's just turn to psalm 116 because that is where the psalmist says that paul has read that and he's quoting that it's good to look at that just for a moment psalm 116 verse 8 onwards for you have delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears and my feet from falling 
I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore I spoke. <laughs> He's in deep trouble. People want to kill him, destroy him, get rid of him. They can't wait to see him dead. He's got a lot of enemies. He says, but I believe that I will live. I believe I will live. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living, he says. He says, God wants me to be here. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Nobody can destroy me. I believed, therefore I spoke. Look at Psalm 118. 118 verse 16 and 17. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die. See, many times you find him saying that because he's got a lot of enemies, a lot of problems in life. A lot of people after him wanting to kill him, chasing him, hunting him down. He says, I shall not die but live. He had to say it every day. Some of us need to say it every day. <laughs> I shall not die but I, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen? I've known many people that would have been dead and gone a long time ago, but they're still living today and declaring the works of God because they have been confessing with their mouth, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the wonderful works of God. You need to declare it every day. When you get up, you need to say, I will walk in the land of the living before God. Doesn't matter who, what anybody wants. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I will not die. I will live. And I will declare the wonderful works of God. The psalmist says, I believe, therefore I speak. That's the kind of man I am. I have faith. I don't just speak unbelief. I speak belief. I don't speak death. I speak belief. My faith. My faith is that I will live. What I can see is that people want to kill me. What I see is powerful enemies. What I see is Saul, a king running after me, wanting to hunt me down and kill me. But I won't speak that. I will speak life. Let him be as big as he wants to be. But I have a God who's bigger. I will live in the land of the living. And I will declare the glory of God and the wonderful works of God. Amen. Let's declare it. Everybody say with me. I shall not die. <laughs> but live. And declare the works of the Lord. People who are sick and people who have issues in life, uh, you know, that are life-threatening, you know, need to say that. And people who don't have such situations also, it's good to store up a lot of faith like this. You shall say, I shall not die. I shall live and declare the wonderful works of God. God has put you here on this earth to do something and to accomplish something, and you declare every day that you shall live and not die, and declare the wonderful works of God, right? So you got to do it. Whatever you say happens. Uh, and uh, this is the law of faith, and you can also call it the law of change. If you're going to change anything about your life, you got to change what you say. Then only everything else. We want everybody to change, you know. We want our husband to change, wife to change, mother-in-law to change, and neighbor to change, and the boss to change, and, and uh, you know, everybody to change, you know. But the Bible says you change. <laughs> you change particularly what you say you change. Then what you have will change. <laughs> then everything about you will change. This is the law of change. Now, with reference to this, let me also read to you John's Gospel, chapter 15. See, this is, this is illustrated in so many ways. This is throughout the scriptures. I can just go on and on, you know, taking examples like this. John chapter 15, verse 7, Jesus is speaking here. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. What an amazing prophet, promise. He says, whatever you ask, it shall be done for you. When? There's a condition. If you abide in me, what does that refer to? If you abide in me means that if you are in Christ. Now you and I, when we came to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and gave our lives to him and got saved, then we are now in him through that. If you abide in me has happened already. If you are a believer 
if you are a child of god if you have received jesus as your lord and savior then you are abiding in him but a lot of people don't go beyond that that's good that's the first stage but that's not over if you abide in me and my words abide in you see a lot of people don't go to the second stage the second stage is where a lot of people have a problem they don't even touch this you know they don't even come to this i know that because i've been born pentecostal raised pentecostal been in the church and uh, for as long as you know i've been around you know from day one so to speak you know and they meant good so they told me about christ and i got into christ i came into christ eh? if you ask me if i abided in christ yes i abided in christ but nobody ever told me about the word of god abiding in me that's the problem you see you can't blame them also because they also didn't know these are things that you just progress and learn you know day by day so in those days it was known not known so even though we were saved we were god's children we meant good and we were good people you know we, we wanted to do good service to the lord and we were ready to even die when i came to ministry they said are you ready to die i said yes that's the way i came you know believe me it's like worse than joining the army you know <laughs> are you ready to die as a martyr that's what they said you know i said yes i will die as a martyr <laughs> you know ready you know how you know what can you expect i was ready to even die but i just was never told how to live successfully <laughs> that we never explored we were prepared to die if we were taken as martyrs we would have been glad shouted hallelujah and went all the way you know no problem but we just could not make it successfully through this life the problem is nobody wanted us to be a martyr you know <laughs> here i am preaching for 40 years nobody tried to kill me <laughs> some few little incidents here and there maybe but uh, nothing big you know no life threatening situation <laughs> so i soon learned listen i'm not going to die soon so no use getting trained to die i must get trained to live successfully and do something great for god in this world now if i've got to live in this world in this world where the devil dominates everything where the devil is around and dominating the minds and the thoughts of people and the deeds of people where there is an evil world all around me and here to do god's will and god's work then i need to know how to put the word in my mouth and word in my heart so that i can be an overcomer in this life and win the battles of my life and do the will of god in this life in this world i must understand that now this is what was missing for us you know the word in our mouth and in our heart is something that i never heard until i went out of the country those days of going out of the country was a great blessing more than one way you know <laughs> if i just stayed here my mind would have been a one track mind you know just kept thinking the same thing and kept kept going in the same track i went out and then somebody told me if i just changed my words my life will change my heart will change and whatever i asked it shall be done for me thanks be to god who always god says us triumph in his name thanks be to god who always god says us to him yeah thanks be to god says us try not finish name thanks be to god thanks be to god we have overcome hallelujah hallelujah we have overcome by the power of your name jesus you're the one hallelujah hallelujah one made a way for us triumph in his name oh 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 oh
as I try your fist name Can't speak I who walks God says I swim Jedi Can't speak I who walks God says I try your fist name Clap our hands and say Thanks be to God We have overcome Hallelujah Hallelujah We have overcome By the power of your name Jesus you're the one Hallelujah Hallelujah The one who made a way for us we got the victory. Victory, everything will be all right, all right. We got the victory, everything will be all right. We're on the winning side. We got the victory, everything will be all right, all right. We got the victory, everything will be all right. We're on the winning One more side. We got the victory, everything will be. All right, all right. We got the victory. Everything will be all right. Cause we're on the winning side. We're on the winning side. We have overcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have overcome by the power of You're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah, the one who made a way for us, he made a way for us.